My name is Dr. William Bonk. Um, I'm trained as a cognitive scientist and I work as a researcher and director of test development at Pearson. Pearson is the largest education company of its kind in the world. It's involved in uh, many different kinds of materials, both, both digital and paper, um, around education for people of all ages and backgrounds throughout the world. Um, and um, I work in particular in the language testing ass uh, and assessment arena. A tool that we've developed for personalized learning is called Right to Learn. This is um, a tool that's online and it's used as a literacy development tool for mainly students between the grades of 4 and 12 or something um, about 9 to 18 years old. And um, it can be used both with native speakers of English or with people who are still learning English or have become somewhat proficient in English. The tool is centered on focus uh, on developing students' literacy and writing abilities. So it gives them the opportunity to write and to get immediate automatic, automatic artificial intelligence feedback on their writing. They can either write essays, such as narrative or argumentative essays. They might write a summary of something that they've already read, or they might uh, get other tools that will help them develop their English vocabulary over time. Um, this tool does need to be well integrated into classes. It's not something that can just be occasionally looked at and then forgotten for weeks at a time. If you are a writing teacher, you would like to look at this tool and figure out how that you can in integrate it for every student in your classes every week. And that would be the way that it would be most productive. When teachers are able to do this, it lessens their own workload and it gives them a lot more opportunity to spend their time doing things that are more sensitive to their professional responsibilities and dealing individually with students in other ways. Um, now this tool uh, needs to be integrated into the syllabus so that it becomes a part of the rhythm of the classroom. Students need to be trained a little bit on how to use it and on how to get the most out of it, and teachers need to understand how frequently the tool should be introduced into classrooms. When it's done properly, it really does free up the teacher from taking a stack of papers home every week and allows them to do their job more efficiently and more uh, uh, in, in focus with the things that they would like to spend their time on. Uh, we get we collect stories about users from our, our Right to Learn customers, and um, one of them is a seventh grade teacher in the state of Georgia. His name is Jeff, and um, he has 129 students in his classes every week. Um, in one year, those students wrote 4,257 essays completed, and those um, essays were written in multiple drafts. So those 129 students wrote 25,542 drafts. That's a lot of words and a lot of writing practice that those students were able to get. Nothing like this is possible when teachers are actually providing their own feedback and um, all the with all the work and the effort that goes into that. I've seen teachers um, offices when you walk in and you look at the stack of writing papers that need to be reviewed sometimes and you think that's not going to be very good feedback when they're sitting there working through a stack that big. So this helps really take off that pressure from the teacher of doing that and allows them to do their spend their time doing other things that are more valuable. It's clear that you can see how often how much more students are writing once they begin using the tool. In the number of words which is tracked you can see that they write probably a hundred times more than they normally would in a classroom because they're writing and revising and getting all of that um, practice as a self-access. Um, teachers notice the differences because they notice that in other classes, they're, those same students are writing more. They're writing more effectively. They're even asking to be doing writing tasks because they want to practice some of their new skills in other domains as well. And even years down the line, some of the teachers noticed that around seventh or eighth grade, a, a big difference happened among these students. And they can see the, the changes in the students who did follow this program versus ones who didn't. Writing is not going away, even though it's becoming, um, the computers are becoming more uh, 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 easily using spoken language. We write so much more and read so much more now than we ever did before. So communication in writing is going to be very, very important. This really gives students a chance to practice those skills early on before it's risky and before they're starting to try to get a job and it's discovered that they don't have those formal writing skills.